salute Gilles in honour of Canada's greatest Grand Prix driver, Gilles Villeneuve, on Montreal's unique island circuit in the St. Lawrence Seaway. A circuit that's hard on brakes, tough on fuel consumption, and the scene of a Grand Prix that could change the order of the World Championship. On a track where outright power and good aerodynamics are the name of the game, Williams Renault drivers Alain Prost and Damon Hill have to be the favourites. Prost's unbroken run of pole positions is maintained in Canada, with a time nearly a second faster than Ayrton Senna's 1992 record. But Senna unexpectedly leads the championship after three superb wins in a series which looks more and more as though either he or Prost will end up as number one for 1993. Ayrton is struggling in Montreal, though, starting eighth in his McLaren Ford, his worst grid position since 107 races ago. 27 years ago, this man, popular New Zealander Bruce McLaren, started his first Grand Prix in his own car. Now the great team he founded is headed by Ron Dennis, and if McLaren win today, they'll equal Ferrari's all-time record of 103 victories. But it looks unlikely. Jean Alesi and Gerhard Berger are driving V12 Ferraris that have been getting better and better after a long time in the doldrums, and they both start ahead of Senna. Fifth and sixth on the grid, the team's best this year. But virtually all the teams in Montreal are shell-shocked by an edict from the race stewards that they're running illegal cars. Their active suspension and traction control systems, on which millions of pounds have been spent, are against the rules, it says. You can race here, but we're notifying the governing body. Martin, with the, with the heat like this, is it going to be a different strategy? I think the cars are going to handle differently. The track was very slippery yesterday afternoon in the second qualifying. You remember, everybody struggled to match their times the day before. And it's three or four degrees hotter already, and the track set temperature is going to be up. But it's, a, it's an interesting race anyway here. I, I think most people will stop for tyres this year, but we'll have to wait and see. It's a bit of a gamble. Uh, if I say that the last 20 laps are going to be more important than at any other racetrack, do you think that's right? Because a lot of people will probably drop out. Yeah, it's very hard on the transmissions, it's very bumpy in the traction areas, very hard on the brakes, it's a, it's a sort of a point and squirt race, stop, go, stop, go, and it's harder on the cars than the drivers, so you, you've got to push, but at the same time, a Formula One race will never come to you, you have to go after it, but at the same time you have to be, in, you have to be there at the finish, particularly here. Good luck. Thanks. I have to say we don't have a new engine, we have a modified engine and uh, that's a little bit better and we both run the same engine, yes. So, what's a good result for Gerhard Berger today? Uh, be in the points and finish the race. And anything can happen. Gonna be difficult because it's very hot. Gonna be difficult to get through. Um, when you when you're back this far, it's always a hard race because uh, the car is obviously not handling very well. We've made a few improvements since the warm up. Hopefully, it's going to be better for the race. But it's it's very hot, very humid. It's going to be the toughest race of the year. The car is uh, it's jumping a lot. I mean, it's it's wants to jump into the wall all the time, doesn't it? Yeah, the car is moving around. I think we had the car too stiff, uh, and it's on the bump rubbers. And now the car seems a lot better. So hopefully, uh, it's important for footwork to uh, to come through and, and have a point here. Thanks a lot. Montreal, no Canadá, para a transmissão direta do Grande Prémio do Canadá, sétima prova do Campeonato do Mundo de Fórmula 1. E para não fugir à regra, os dois Williams ocupam uh, os dois primeiros lugares da grelha de partida. Novidade sim, é a má colocação dos McLaren de Ayrton Senna e Michael Andretti, Senna, que não conseguiu melhor que o oitavo tempo, que lhe dá um lugar na quarta fila da grelha, e Andretti parte da sexta fila da grelha. À frente de Senna estão os Ferraris, o que acontece pela primeira vez esta temporada, com Berger ligeiramente à frente de Jean Alesi, e ainda mais à frente os dois, Benetton Ford, Michael Schumacher e de Ricardo Patrese. Portanto, esta grelha de partida até à quarta fila eh, é feita aos pares os dois Williams Renault os dois Benetton Ford e os dois Ferrari depois na quarta fila aparece um McLaren Ford e um Ligier Renault o de Martin Brando 
Conosco aqui para os comentários, quando estamos a ver imagens eh, dos treinos de classificação, mas dizia eu, conosco aqui para os comentários deste grande prémio, temos o jornalista do volante José Miguel Barros. Boa tarde, José Miguel. Boa tarde. Eh, inesperado, de certa maneira, esta má colocação dos McLaren, já que quanto à colocação dos uh, Williams Renault na primeira fila da grelha, nada de espantar, tem sido assim ao longo de todo o campeonato e Alan Prost colecionou aqui a sua sétima pole position consecutiva, o que é o novo recorde. É um novo recorde uh, conseguido numa única época. Sete pole positions consecutivas, nunca nenhum piloto tinha conseguido uh, numa só época. Uh, entretanto, o recorde absoluto é de nove consecutivas em duas épocas da parte de Ayrton Senna. Mas chama a atenção para a imagem uh, que tinha, tinha ali umas indicações Agora temos o Schumacher. particularmente interessantes, vamos ver se elas aparecerão outra vez e nessa altura referirmos emos no entanto, relativamente ao McLaren de Ayrton Senna e de uma maneira geral ao comportamento dos McLaren de Ford, a diferença foi tão grande para os Benetton de Ford que não se pode considerar que tenha sido apenas uma questão de motor, de falta de potência da parte dos McLaren é evidente que o motor é bastante importante nesta pista, mas um bom equilíbrio do carro também o é, e aí é que a McLaren terá falhado um pouco e uh, não conseguiu ir além da oitava posição, sobretudo por não ter um carro bem equilibrado. Aliás, ele não se referiu sequer ao motor durante todo o fim de semana e uh, se o Ayrton Senna considerasse que esta posição na grelha de partida uh, se devia à insuficiência de cavalos do seu carro, certamente ele não tinha escondido esse facto. É, como foi... não, ele, ele de qualquer maneira fez uma referência ligeira, ele disse que ia fazer uma corrida de expectativa, explorações prestadas ontem, aliás, ele durante todo o fim de semana tem falado muito pouco, apenas disse que o McLaren estava quase inguiável e depois remeteu-se a um certo silêncio, talvez devido às dificuldades que atravessou durante todo o fim de semana, mas ontem eh, acabou por afirmar que iria fazer uma corrida de expectativa, o que desde logo eh, deixa as pessoas um pouco eh, na dúvida, que não estamos bem a ver o Ayrton Senna, que é um homem de ataque, eh, fazer uma corrida de expectativa. Ele sabe que neste grande prémio, normalmente 50% dos carros que partem não chegam ao fim, é um circuito muito exigente em termos de caixas de velocidades, motor e travões, eh, sabe isso disse que ia fazer uma, uma corrida de expectativa, até porque era impossível competir com o William Renault e que não tinha motor para os Benetton Ford. Portanto, fez a referência civilina ah, ao facto de não haver eh, ainda resolvido o problema da entrega, da entrega do motor pela Ford ao, à, à sua equipa. O motor com a distribuição pneumática há de surgir no Grande Prémio de Inglaterra, portanto, dentro de dois grandes prémios teremos o McLaren com o um motor mais potente, ligeiramente mais potente estamos em querer, não há assim uma diferença muito, muito, muito grande de cavalos. Agora, o, a diferença dos McLaren para os Williams Renault é de facto muito grande e se a Ayrton Senna, num circuito como o Monegasco, em que ele se sente particularmente à vontade, Uh, pois uh, também adotou uma posição de expectativa no início uh, uh, ainda é mais uh, natural que aqui mal colocado na grelha de partida e uh, com um ritmo uh, que uh, estará a cerca de um segundo uh, do ritmo dos primeiros uh, é evidente que mais justifica temos na imagem a taça Stanley uh, que a equipa de Montreal uh, conquistou é a mais, import... okay, okay sobre o Exato, é a mais importante taça em disputa por equipas de hóquei sobre o gelo e foi uh, uma verdadeira loucura aqui em Montreal uh, quando na quinta-feira a equipa local, os uh, Le Canadien, conquistaram este troféu uh, mais uma vez. Mas já não eles, conquistavam eles, há muitos eles anos. Eles estão aqui desde manhã, amiga. Uh, já fizeram não sei quantas voltas a este circuito. São delirantemente aplaudidos pelo público quando passam uh, com a taça conquistada. Refira-se que este troféu para os Estados Unidos e para o Canadá é muitíssimo mais importante que o Campeonato do Mundo. Eu estive a informar-me eh, qual era a importância desta Stanley Cup e, e aquilo que me foi dito foi que as equipas canadiana e americana que 
são enviadas aos campeonatos do mundo é, e que, por vezes, obtêm bons resultados, são é, compostas por jogadores de segunda linha, não os jogadores profissionais. São amadores, normalmente jogadores universitários, os profissionais. Esses participam na Stanley Cup, que é o, o, enfim, máximo. o máximo em termos de hockey sobre o gelo. entretanto que no warm-up se verificou uma melhoria substancial da parte de Schumacher e Alesi, pelo menos relativamente aos Williams Renault. Prost continuou a ser o mais rápido, Damon Hill foi o terceiro, entre os dois no warm-up ficou Schumacher, e na quarta posição, Alesi. Entre Prost e Alesi, apenas meio segundo, portanto, Schumacher e o piloto da Ferrari, e o francês da Ferrari, conseguiram uh, rodar praticamente ao mesmo nível uh, dos uh, Williams Renault, o que uh, pode ser significativo uh, por ter sido conseguido no warm-up e pode representar para o Grande Prémio do Canadá a possibilidade de, uh, partindo em boa posição, em boas posições nesta, nesta corrida, Schumacher e Alesi poderem eventualmente uh, incomodar os pilotos dos Williams Renault. Temos Ricardo Patrese, que se encontra na segunda linha, linha de grelha de partida, ao lado de Michael Schumacher. Berger desta vez foi o melhor colocado da equipa Ferrari, até a quinta posição. Depois o Jean Alesi. A diferença Nós estamos, entre a ver, dois... estamos a ver a grelha uh, por, uh, por imagens, uh, com os pois pilotos... na quarta linha, Martin Brando, que vai decidir com Ayrton Senna. Vai a partir Martin à frente do Ayrton Martin Brando e Mark Blandl conseguiram uh, colocar-se no top 10 aqui neste circuito, não só porque uh, dispõem de motores Renault e os motores, como já referimos, são importantes neste uh, circuito Gilles Villeneuve, mas também porque, finalmente, uh, os Ligier apareceram com o pacote completo de alterações aerodinâmicas que incluía uh, também o... Pit row, you can see it on your screen now. Carl Wendlinger and Mark Blundell, JG Leto and Michael Andretti on the sixth row. The seventh row, Eric Omas and Rubens Barrichello, while Philip Alio and Aguri Suzuki are on the eighth row. The ninth row, Christian Fittipaldi, Derek Warwick, Andrea De Cesaris and Johnny Herbert are on the tenth row. Alessandro Zanardi and Okio Katayama on the eleventh. And the grid is closed by Luca Badur, and the only non-qualifier on this glorious day here in Canada is Michele Alboreto. And John, he is the driver's worst enemy today, I think. Well, not just the driver, Alar, this is always a very, very tough Grand Prix. Historically, it's been that way, regardless of regulations or formula, this is a circuit that is a car killer. On a day like today, and you've been on the grid a few moments ago, it's certainly in the middle 80s, just the ambient on the grid, probably closer to 100 degrees. It's a very hard circuit for fuel economy or fuel consumption. We know that most teams are considering a stop to change tires, and with Alain Prost and Damon Hill in the front, I know that certainly Alain Prost will not want to unnecessarily go flat out in the early part of the race. He will want to to lead but control from the front because it will be very crucial at the point when he wants to come in to make that stop he will not want to do it too early in the race this will undoubtedly be a race of strategy on the circuit and neat and efficient pit work in the pit lane the uh, signal you just heard was one minute to go and in the meantime that is um, 40 seconds to go to the green flag lab and on your screen we've seen the championship standings for drivers and constructors and i think anything close to a miracle should happen today for ayrton senna still to lead when we get back to europe and we get to the french grand prix at magny on board with michael schumacher and john michael schumacher said the first lap today is crucial i'm gonna be aggressive well I mean, those are his words, and uh, those are words he may have to own up to after this Grand Prix, but certainly 
the opening lap here will be crucial. It's a slightly unusual start in that from the start they go to a very quick right-hand curve and then it's hard on the brake. And the normal effect here is that concertina where the cars at the back are still charging when the cars at the front of the grid in fact are slowing down. Michael Andretti, I think, is not gone away. A McLaren is stalled on the grid. Is it Michael Andretti or is it Ayrton Senna? We will see. The car is not allowed to take up its normal grid position. That is Ayrton Senna. So there we see Michael Andretti. Anything close to drama for the American. He has got to start at the back of the grid if he's going to start at all. Well, that's a big problem because very shortly a decision is going to be made to push the car off the grid, whatever. And that looks to me suspiciously like it's something like fuel vaporization, a problem that is quite common in really, really hot conditions. Uh, John, they're going to push that car away, of course, with the semi-automatic gearboxes. You can't push start it. Well, hopefully the car was in neutral before the engine failed or didn't start to getting the car off the grid or not to be a problem. But it's one of those situations that has got to be attended to very quickly because the cars are now coming up to, and there we see Michael Andretti being pushed away. And what disappointment. He will be pushed into the, the pit lane and the car will be brought to rest at the pit exit. Now, if they can get it fired up, then he can take the start, but he has to wait until everybody has gone past before that car will be allowed to join the race. Again, disappointment then for Michael Andretti. Alain Prost, there we see Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher, the top three, and it is going to be an interesting first corner because not only Michael Schumacher is there, also the man who finished second here a year ago, John Lazy, who will charge on that. Michael Andretti being pushed into the pit lane from the starting grid. He wasn't able to get away, and that means to say that he's going to have to start from the pit lane may be in the spare car. I can't tell you because I can't see it, see the pit lane, but uh, he will either get his own car going, but they have to do it very quickly indeed, because here they are coming up onto the grid, ready to start round seven of the 16 race World Championship Series of 1993 on the Gilles Villeneuve circuit of Montreal in Canada. It's on a man-made island and Prost is obviously the favourite because his pole position time was nearly a second faster than Ayrton Senna's pole position record time last year. Andretti can't get the second car going and it looks as though the unfortunate American is a non-starter. Although I have no doubt that they will be working very hard on his car to try and get him away. Anyway, concentrate on the starting grid. Alain Prost to the right in pole position for the seventh time this year in seven races. He's been in pole position for every one of them. The green at the back shows they're ready to go. Damon Hill on the left and behind Alain Prost. The lights go to green. A beautiful start by the Ferrari, a very bad start by one of the Benettons. I think that was Damon Hill who got away first. He got a little bit wide on the exit to the right, but Damon made a beautiful start. Yes, indeed. So there is the Williams, followed by Prost, followed by the two Ferraris. Ayrton Senna is up into fifth position. It's Hill leading. Prost is in second position. It is Berger third and Lacey fourth. Ayrton Senna is in fifth position. And Martin Brundle is challenging for sixth place. He's starting seventh on the grid. He's got Schumacher in front of him, Patrese behind him. So Martin Brundle has already made up a place by passing Ricardo Patrese. And we're riding with the Benetton now of Michael Schumacher, or we were. And that's Martin Brundle's Ligier ahead. Martin loves this circuit. He nearly won the Canadian Grand Prix last year when he was driving for Benetton. And, and Andretti is still in the pit lane as Senna comes right up alongside the Ferrari. Yes, yeah, Senna really charging. And uh, made a terrific start. He has not got the line, but he's taking it side by side, but he's got the line for the left-hand bit, and Senna goes through into fourth place. 
Well, so much for the theory that Ayrton Senna might be taking it comparatively easily. He's charging, Hill leads, Prost second, Berger is in third position, Ayrton Senna in the McLaren with the lightweight Ford engine is in fourth position. We're with him now, and that is the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger in front, and Alain Prost is trying to catch Damon Hill. There are no team orders, of course, in the williams Renault team. And if Damon Hill can stay ahead, he's got every right to do so. Cross will be trying to stop him. The Frenchman is in second place in the World Championship and wants the points by getting ahead of Senna, who is now right on the rear wing of Gerhard Berger's Ferrari. Yes, and Senna obviously taking a charge in the opening lap to try and get as many paces up as he can from his grid position. And he's already made uh, an outstanding four places from eighth on the grid. He's in fifth place at the first corner, and he is charging. Look, he's holding the Ferrari for power. He's going to have a look. And Senna is going down the inside, and he's through. Senna into third place. At the east hairpin, so he's only got the two Williams Renaults in front of him now. Now, he's going to have a job to catch them, particularly as Berger is carrying the McLaren Ford. Gerhard Berger in the Ferrari, which has been patiently worked on all season by John Barnard, Harvey Posselthwaite and the rest of the Ferrari people. They're much better. Alesi is ahead of Schumacher, who is just ahead of Patrese, who is just ahead of Martin Brundle as they go through and they are now on their third lap in this 69 lap Canadian Grand Prix and here's a replay of Senna going through on the inside he forces his way up alongside Gerhard Berger on the first gear 30 mile an hour east hairpin and they're accelerating away now around the rest of the lap yes and I was a little bit surprised to see Gerhard Berger leave the door open and not make Senna go around the outside there but uh, they of course were teammates for several years and uh, one, it may be that Berger felt that uh, this was an irresistible charge by Senna as Damon Hill coolly leading. Prost has now played himself in. But uh, as I say, Berger may have well felt that uh, he couldn't send Senna off indefinitely and therefore defended to let him go before it all got a bit too exciting. But certainly an absolutely stunning first three laps from Ayrton Senna with a car that he struggled with all weekend, but still, when the green light came on, he found inspiration. And, and you know, this weird picture is looking back from two cameras on Damon Hill's car. You can see how the active suspension, which is being outlawed, incidentally, works. And you can see how absolutely stable the chassis is. And you can see in the background Alain Prost's Williams. And as James says, Alain Prost has played himself in now. He's leading by, uh, they're ahead of Senna by some two seconds. And Hill, well, that half a second uh, is academic because Prost is basically in the slipstream of Damon Hill's Williams Renault. They're on lap four with behind them in third position, of course, Ayrton Senna, previous winner twice. And that's the fastest lap, 1 minute 25.3. That's three seconds outside the lap record, but very early in the race with a full fuel load. Yes, and uh, <laughs> Cross now has caught Damon Hill until he can get past. He'll, his pace will be controlled by Hill, but the interesting thing now is to see if Senna is closing that gap. It was 3.5 seconds between him and Prost when they last crossed the line. He seemed to have made some... Uh, impression on the Williamses on his first lap past the Ferraris and he's certainly pulling away from the two much revived Ferraris at a most impressive speed now and a replay here from on board Schumacher's car attacking one of the Ferraris probably a lazy with Berger in front of him and Schumacher makes it through under braking for the chicane well controlled uh, at braking maneuver Lap five, race order, of course, Damon Hill leading, Prost is second, uh, Senna is in third position, in fourth position it's Gerhard Berger, fifth behind him is Michael Schumacher, and you can see the 
German now sawing away, trying to get past the Ferrari in front of him. Then it is Jean Alesi who is in sixth place. In seventh position, it is Ricardo Petresi. In eighth position, it's Martin Brundle who's dropped a place, therefore, in ninth position. It's Philippe Alio going extremely well in the La Rousse with the Lamborghini engine. And you watch Damon Hill. I say again, no team orders. Prost has got to fight his way past the Englishman, who has already led three Grand Prix this year, but it's not going to be easy. It's very difficult to pass here. And uh, the Williamses are, in fact, pulling away from Senna at the moment. And it may well be that Senna will be cutting his pace now to try and look after his tyres, but I suspect he's going to have to race it out uh, in the normal way. I think uh, his plan of uh, patience and caution, well, it still exists in that he's going to have to uh, get the car to finish, and it's a very hard circuit mechanically on cars here. A lot of strain on the transmission. The hot weather today uh, is... Hot weather's always bad news for the reliability of racing cars, and on a circuit that strains the mechanical components as well. anyway, uh, you'll be expecting some attrition, but not as likely from the Williams Renaults as from some of the cars lower down the field. And they now know no longer interest Senna as he's running in third place. Alain Prost going faster and faster, but so of course is Damon Hill in front of him because they're matching each other's lap times. They're coming down to the east hairpin again, which is the tight right-hander at the end of the lap, and they approach that tremendously fast. But when they come out of the east hairpin in first gear and go up through the gears and the semi-automatic gearboxes, which are going to be banned as Prost closes up and takes a look on the inside and goes through. Alain Prost leads the Canadian Grand Prix on lap six. He just dives inside Damon Hill, and now I have little doubt that he will pull away. Well, I think Damon, let, Damon left the door nicely open for him then. He uh, gave him space. Prost was alongside going into the corner, and that may well be a tactical move for Smith two reasons. Damon will try his best here, we see it again, but he sees Prost coming, he makes the space, and now he leaves him a car's width on the kerb, and so Prost is through, and he won't be more gentlemanly invited to, to come through th than that. And uh, Damon Hill will find it easier to follow, he should be able to pick up his lap time following Prost, whether he can stay with him or not is another matter, but he's certainly going to try. But I would have thought that was a tactical move by the team because Senna is uh, still in a threatening position and it's most important with him still leading the championship that uh, the team get Prost on the move points-wise. Now we've got an action replay with Schumacher yet again passing Berger and dispatching the second, or, or the leading Ferrari. But uh, this has been uh, a promising race for the Ferrari team, just the fact that they've qualified so well. The car is definitely improving on a gradual basis and that's good for everybody and uh, tremendous to see we need to see them right up front so michael schumacher up into fourth position behind ayrton senna by passing gerhard berger's ferrari and the race order on lap seven as you watch alain prost trying to maximize his world championship points with senna behind him in third position Katayama has already been into the pits and is about to be lapped by the race leader. Derek Warwick has been into the pits. Michael Andretti is back on the is on the circuit, out of the pit lane, and you can see for yourself the gap between Prost at first, Hill there in second position, Ayrton Senna in third place, as Prost comes up to go past the Tyrrell 019, not the new one of Katayama. Well, in the traffic already. And uh, Hill, of course, will, will cover Ayrton Senna behind him quite well for Prost, which is most important from Prost's point of view. But uh, Senna's got a problem now because Schumacher, having worked his way through into fourth place, uh, is much more of a threat to Senna than ever the, either of the Ferraris could have been. But Schumacher was uh, split the two Williamses uh, initially in qualifying, well, not in qualifying, but they split him in the warm-up this morning, and uh, the Schumacher and his Benetton have gone very well all weekend. So, indeed, did Riccardo Patrese in qualifying. 
but uh, he was about a second away from Schumacher in the warm-up this morning. So Schumacher now has got clear road in front of him, and uh, we'll get a gap between Senna and him and see whether it starts closing or not, because he certainly was potentially quicker than Senna uh, hitherto all this weekend. Well, there's about three seconds between Senna and Damon Hill in second position. There is Michael Schumacher in fourth place. Fifth behind him is Berger, sixth behind him is Alesi, seventh is still Riccardo Patrese, eighth is still Martin Brundle. In ninth position, it is now Carl Wendlinger, who's moved up in the Sauber. In tenth place, it is Mark Blundell in the second of the Ligiers. And you can see Martin Brundle there challenging Riccardo Patrese. So there is the Benetton, there is the Ligier, and as I said earlier on, this circuit suits Martin Brundle extremely well. He was up into second place last year in the Benetton, and he will be very anxious to get past Patrese for all sorts of reasons, not the least of which is that Patrese is driving the car that Martin Brundle regards as rightfully his. Although with the Ligier getting better and better now and having undoubtedly the most powerful engine, the Renault RS5, which they share with the Williams team, Martin Brundle can't be regretting things now. The car is getting better and better. So, Frost, Hill, Senna, and this Canadian Gilles Villeneuve circuit, surrounded by water, gives a better impression of Grand Prix cars at speed than almost any other. You can see how far now Okio Katayama has dropped back, and you can see that Ayrton Senna is reeling in Damon Hill in second position. And I remind you that Senna is a double winner here in Canada. He's won three Grand Prix against expectations this year already, as has race leader Alain Prost. That between them in the championship, there, is on, there are only five points. And Senna will be more than anxious to do well here because when the power circuits come after this, the real power circuits like Hockenheim and Silverstone, the extra horsepower of the Renault engine is going to pay off in comparison. And that, that's Alio, Alio touring out of the race. So that is the first retirement. Philippe Alio in the La Russe has finished in Canada for this year. He drove very well, started uh, about halfway up the grid, but is out of the race. So, now, there, number two, Alain Prost. Clear track in front of him, clean air, that makes a big difference, but all the time, concentrate your attention on Ayrton Senna, he is the man, and he had a lot of trouble in practice. Yes, but going much better in the race, and the... Uh... The fact is that he's about to catch Damon Hill because he was ahead. And that was Badoa in the pits. Luca Badoa in the Lola. And he was the last of the qualifiers on 25th place. His teammate, Michele Alboreto, uh, didn't qualify. And there's been a real struggle for the, the cars this year. The Lola just haven't performed. In the meantime, there is Alain Prost leading the race, pulling away from Damon Hill. But Damon Hill is about to be a very, very useful part indeed of the Williams team, uh, or have the chance to be, because Ayrton Senna is catching him, and Damon Hill should, with the Renault engine, not find it too difficult to hold Senna at bay, despite the relative differences in experience, because uh, when he puts his foot down coming out of a corner, He just goes away from the McLaren, and uh, by the time they get to the next corner, it tends to be out of range for an attack. Frost in traffic. Coming up to take uh, Derek Warwick in the footwork, Mugen, who looks as though he's in for another miserable race because he's been lapped already, having been into the pits already, as has Katayama. And you can see the first three, and that is the Barrichello, the young Brazilian, 21 years old, in the Jordan heart, of whom so much was expected here today. He started in 14th position and was quicker than that in the warm-up and had shown real skill at this semi-street circuit. Great pity that he's out of the race. Now, Damon Hill is catching traffic and that will uh, 
certainly excite our presenter, but Derek Warwick's very experienced. He'll probably let, well, he's kept his line so far, and that has given a little breathing space to Damon. And here comes Sella. And Sella will be trying to close up the hill as tight as he can when they get near any back markers, because you'll see that as his best opportunity to attack the less experienced and obviously conservatively driven Williams. We're on lap 12 now, and it's still Prost leading Hill second, Senna closing in third position in fourth place. It is still Michael Schumacher in the Benetton, then the two Ferraris of Gerhard Berger and John Alesi, followed by Riccardo Patrese and Martin Brundle. And when you see that double camera shot again of the Williams looking back from Damon Hill's car, observe how steady the platform on which the two wheels and their suspension are going up and down is. It's rock steady. Now, 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 Senna is closing up into the slipstream of Damon Hill and we're going to see a real motor race from now on because it will be Damon Hill's duty to try and keep him where he is in third position. Yes, referring to uh, the, the platform, i.e. the chassis on the Williams, it's a good test here in Canada because it's a pretty bumpy circuit, so we get to see really just how well the Williams is is coping with it, which is interesting because last year, of course, was their first year with their fully active car, and they didn't cope with it very well. For them, it was a disappointing qualifying, uh, i.e. they weren't first and second on the grid for the first time, I think, or just about, except for Monaco, maybe. No, not even Monaco. Uh, last year, so that was a bit of a surprise, but it looks like they have got their act together, having been able to study the, the uh, computers after the race, whereas McLaren certainly seemed to have come here and walked into the same problem that Williams had last year and had trouble getting an active car to perform well. Gerhard Berger fifth, John Alesi sixth. Behind him is Ricardo Patrese seventh. Behind him is Martin Brundle eighth. So it is a close and fought thing for those places. The two Ferraris staving off the Benetton Ford of Riccardo Patrese, who's doing the same thing with Martin Brundle. And how heartwarming it is to see the Ferraris going so well here. They are getting better and better to the extent that there have been rumors that Ayrton Senna has been talking to Ferrari about joining them next year, which was precisely what Gerhard Berger hoped would not happen when he signed for Ferrari at the end of 1992 but the Austrian going into the apex of the right-hander at turn one there is driving beautifully Alain Prost the quickest man on the circuit and Martin Brundle making no impression at the moment on Petrosi yes yeah, so between second and third Hill and Senna seems to be uh, Hill seems to be holding Senna at about a second and a half away and that would be understandable in that Senna's car will be very much in the turbulence from Hills and that's Mark Blundell off the circuit he's backed it into the barrier there the rear wing is uh, well awry and maybe we'll see a replay of that to find out what happened but he hasn't uh, unlike his teammate Martin Blundell it hasn't been a great weekend for him a bit of a struggle and as I say, there's a stalemate with Senna in the turbulence now from Hills Williams. We'll find it difficult to get any closer for the attack, and it gets less grip on the corners. In the meantime, it's giving Schumacher a chance to close that gap very slightly. He, when, Senna, when he got into fourth place behind Senna, he was six seconds behind him. Senna got the gap out to nearly eight, and it's now back down. To, uh, well, in fact, uh, Schumacher must have been in traffic because it was down to six and a half and Schumacher had lost over a second on that lap to Senna. So uh, what uh, I'm trying to say is that Senna and Schumacher at the moment seem very evenly matched when they're uh, on a clear run. So another faster step for Alain Prost, who's just steadily turning on the pace. He's driving a hard race, and this shows that he's driving uh, right on the limit because... His lap times are coming down by the odd tenth of the time, and that's as much to do with the fuel load coming down. And it appears that his tyres at the moment are still performing perfectly well. 
Well, I'm sure nobody needs me to tell them about the brilliance of Ayrton Senna, but this race speaks volumes for it, because look at him, he's right up with Damon Hill, Senna in third position, he started eighth on the grid, so he's fought his way past a lot of people, including the two Ferraris, including Martin Brantl in the Ligier, including the two Benettons of Schumacher and Patrese, who are chasing him hard. And Michael Schumacher is just about holding Ayrton Senna on pace, but there's a gap. Now, what are we looking at? A replay as Warwick in the footwork goes right down. And Damon Hill, now you can see that, that 23.9 compares with the lap record of 22.3. And that was Mark Blundell's empty Ligier, which they get. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Watch those two wheels. <laughs> Never mind. Some other time, perhaps. Here we are. Watch those two wheels. And, and those two wheels are the Williams, which uh, Ayrton Senna is closing on as he goes into the right and uh, before the East hairpin. Now, when they come down here, they're doing about 180, 180 miles an hour. Hard on the brakes, down through the gears, into first to 30 miles an hour. Trickle in comparative terms round the East Hairpin, accelerate away and build up to 180 miles an hour again. There is no real straight on this circuit, it's all corners or curves. Well, that uh, little action replay we saw just now, I thought was Johnny Herbert making the passing mover, and Herbert, as the Ferraris do battle with each other, and it looks as if there's a lazy going through, he's past Berger. They've been sitting nose to tail for most, well, for the whole race so far, really. And uh, Johnny Herbert, he was making that pass we saw in the action replay, and he is now up to 13th place from well down on the grid, and he's made up quite a few places and will be driving very much for a finish. So look out for Herbert in the latter part of the race if he's still running, gradually picking his way through. So here's a replay of Jean Alessi at the East Hairpin taking advantage of Gerhard Berger being mildly unsighted by Derek Warwick, diving through on the inside. No team orders in Ferrari, no quarter asked for or given and we're with the Ferrari now and that is Berger on the left as Alessi goes through and now he is setting about the car in front of him. The Ferraris are going well indeed. Alessi fifth, Berger sixth, and there are the other positions ahead of them. And in seventh position, it is now still Riccardo Patrese. Eighth is Martin Brundle. Ninth is Vendlinger. Tenth is his teammate, JJ Leto. In eleventh position, it is Comas in the Lamborghini. And just to give you the top 12, Christian Fittipaldi going well in the Minardi after having a very torrid practice. Well, if any aspiring Formula 3 or Formula 3000 drivers were watching that Ferrari passing manoeuvre then by an AZ, uh, don't plan to do that to Berger uh, yourselves in the future unless you're in the same team because Berger is not known to be generous to people coming down the inside and, and really a lazy was struggling to stop then and uh, uh, and not to hit Berger and Berger actually made the space for him because uh, a lazy had committed himself One and a half seconds off the lap record as Andrea de Cesaris in the Tyrrell is caught by race leader Alain Prost, who's coming through to complete his 18th, 1-8, 18th lap out of 69. Long way to go. We've only got a few retirements so far. Alio, uh, Barrichello and Blundell, just three of the 25 who started. Michele Alboreto did not start. He didn't qualify, but his Lola teammate Luca Badur did. And that, now, let's see where Senna is. Oh, Damon Hill has e eased away a little bit in comparison with Senna. And you probably saw Schumacher just going into the right-hander as Senna came towards us. Yes, it's, and Schumacher has now uh, closed the gap again a bit to Senna. He's taking advantage of the fact that Senna is stuck behind Damon Hill. I mean, the, the, he certainly can get up to about a second away. Then he seems to get into the turbulence from Hill's car. There's not a lot he can do. And then sometimes the traffic holds him up. But it may be that Senna will have to try and pass Hill by being tactical with tyres. Because even if he could get right onto the Williams' tail, and uh, that certainly isn't, doesn't
doesn't look, look, look possible at the moment. Even if he could get there, I doubt whether he could pass. There is Schumacher. That's the man in pursuit. And yet another faster stat for Prost, bringing it down as a tenth for the time. And this is consistent driving, uh, just as you'd expect from triple world champion, the most successful driver of all time. His lap times are absolutely on the limit, and you produce consistent lap times like that when you're driving right on the limit. If you're driving below it, you cannot be that consistent. So, will Senna try and out-fumble Damon Hill on pit stops to get ahead as the threat from Schumacher behind stays large? Berger, Alesi, Patrese and Brundle still together. Berger pulling away from his teammate and Gerhard in the Ferrari is in fifth place. Now that fastest lap as you look at, at, at uh, Berger, Patrese, Brundle in the Ligier. And behind them Carl Wendlinger who's closing up in the Sauber. The gap between Schumacher and Senna is about six seconds. But that fastest lap of Alain Prost being one and a half seconds off Berger's record, I remind you, was done on narrower tyres with smaller wings and with a very different fuel specification from last year. And the fact that Prost's pole position time was nearly a second faster than Ayrton Senna's last year with a similar advantage was quite incredible. But we've got a wonderful scrap here. This is real Grand Prix racing. And Damon Hill goes through in second place. I didn't see who it was that he had lapped. And it's uh, it's one of the Tyrrells. It's Andrea De Cesaris. And Ayrton Senna has got a disadvantage now. He's going to try and fly around the outside of the Tyrrell and does so as they come down to the East Hairpin. This is the end of lap 20. Still another 49 laps to go. Cross leads. Hill second. Senna third. Schumacher in the background. He's definitely bigger in that picture than he was on the previous lap, so he is catching the McLaren. Things are building up very nicely indeed, with John Alesi in fifth position, his teammate Gerhard Berger in sixth place, seventh Patrese, eighth Martin Brundle, ninth... ...of centre, under braking, and the change of the colour of the surface. So there's a fair amount of pick-up around the circuit, that's the small bits of rubber that get shredded during the course of a race. And if your tyres do pick it up, it does change the handling characteristic of the car considerably. But Senna now again down to the 1.2 seconds we saw a few laps ago. And Senna maybe now prepared to push that a little bit harder again. And can Damon Hill respond? Senna's last lap, 124.609. Damon Hill's 1 minute 25.234. And that brought that gap down from 1.6 to 1.2 seconds. There we see it on our screen. The top six unchanged. Race leader. Now you can see for yourself the gap between three times world champion Alain Cross, number two in the Williams Renault. Three times a Grand Prix winner this year. The man who's won more Grand Prix in the history of the sport than anybody else. 47 of them. Scored more world championship points than anybody else. 736 and a half of them crossing the line completing the lap and crossed so smooth so effortless but so very very fast millimeter perfect on every corner nice. coming up to the right hander at turn three as Hill continues to lead Ayrton Senna and if there are going to be tyre stops, I would expect them to start in about eight laps time. 69 lap race, I would expect them to be coming in from round about lap 30 onwards. But your guess is as good as mine. Yes, I would think they might, uh, certainly in Senna's case, they could well come in earlier. That, uh, between lap 25 and 30, I would expect people to start coming. And if Senna is looking for something tactical, and Schumacher is starting to close in on him. He may well want to get his stop in before Schumacher is too close to him to be is close enough to him to be able to pass on anything but a really messed up pit stop. So that, i.e., when Schumacher makes his tire change and goes out behind, he'll, he will be behind Senna because Senna will have, then have had the advantage of running on fresh rubber. 
uh, at the same time, he needs to be far enough ahead of the Ferraris so that he doesn't want to come out of the pits uh, on fresh rubber, going very fast, and then have to fight his way past the Ferraris again. Because they won't be as easy to pass this time, probably. Don't underestimate the performance of Damon Hill. He is sandwiched between two three times world champions. This is, after all, only his ninth Grand Prix, two of which didn't count in the Brabham last year. And here are Berger, Patrese, Brundle, and Wendlinger, Ferrari, Benetton, Ligier, and Sauber, four different constructors. And Gerhard Berger is in that sixth position. And we're with the Benetton now of race veteran Riccardo Patrese, who started fourth on the grid, was accused earlier in the season of dragging his feet, but has certainly woken up this year with the Benetton in the last few races, and he's really going for it. So, Ferrari engine, Ford engine, Renault engine, Ilmore engine in those four cars. Yes, yeah, so Senna is currently only 18 seconds in front of Alesi's Ferrari, and that isn't enough for comfort. Berger fending off, uh, causing a little bit of a train here. And I wonder if Berger has got a bit of a handling problem that's slowed him down a bit. He didn't have a happy weekend after his good opening call. Brundle having a look down the inside of Patrese, and of course this matters a great deal to Martin Brundle, and what a good meeting he's been having here. Qualified extremely well, and uh, just as last year, going very well in the race, driving with a good measure of control as well as, as, well as uh, a new turn of speed. He'll be looking for a way, Martin Brundle, to use the power of the Renault engine to put it across Riccardo Patrese. Not that it's anything personal between him, between the pair of them, because uh, it wasn't Patrese's fault that uh, Benetton decided to have him rather than Martin, but to put it across the Benetton team, he would like very much. Fendlinger's car that you're looking at now, the Black Sauber, is the only one of these four that has not got active suspension. And uh, it says a lot for Fendlinger that he's able to hold. And that's a, that's a Ferrari. So that must be Jean Alesi out of the running. The unfortunate French Sicilian looks as though he's out of the Canadian Grand Prix and out of the fifth position that he had. So now Berger is fifth. There is Alesi out of the race. So Gerhard Berger moves up into fifth position and Jean Alesi, who's had such awful luck this season because this is the fifth time that he will have failed to finish in his seven Grand Prix. I think I saw a puff of smoke from the back there. It looks to me as though the V12 engine has had enough. And here they are passing him. Berger goes through to fifth place. Patrese goes through to sixth. Brundle goes through to seventh. Wendlinger is up into eighth position. And you see the, the body of... Jean Alesi as it exits the Ferrari. Oh Poor Jean. He's just reattaching his steering wheel, which is now required by the regulations. So there's uh, a few incidents of the drivers legging off with their steering wheel tucked under their arm. And then the poor marshals can't find it very difficult to steer the car and manoeuvre it around when they need to in a hurry. Michael Andretti, the first we've seen of him. Got a uh, problem on the grid, got running late. lost probably a couple of laps at the beginning of the race. Let's hope uh, that he at least is circulating quickly and at least is able to enjoy himself and uh, find a few cars to race with as he goes. Alain Prost now to one hundredth of a second, one second off Gerhard Berger's 1992 lap record. Prost just gone round in 123.3. Smoothly, calmly, he knows exactly what the position is because thanks to the modern miracle of electronic communication which is going to be banned also next year 
he knows from his pit radio exactly what the score is and he's coming up now to catch and to lap Michael Andretti who got out so late what a dreadful Grand Prix introduction Paul Michael has had four failures to finish he's only finished twice he's only scored two points in world championship racing in contrast to his rival Nigel Mansell has done so well in Indy racing well, he could do his team leader a bit of a favor here because he's got Prost coming up on his tail and it might just be that he can get it round quickly enough to hold Prost up for a couple of, couple of laps he would very much like to get past the Minardi first he'll find it a lot easier to hold Prost up from that situation but I'm sure the McLaren team will have seen this possibility and communicated it to him on the radio it's the Minardi of Fabrizio Barbazza who uh, created a bit of a sensation in the pit lane by landing one of the largest pike fish in the history of humanity in Canada when he was fishing yesterday. He's a great fisherman. Damon Hill in second position, holding off Ayrton Senna very successfully indeed. The leaders are now on their 27th lap in the Canadian Grand Prix out of 69. And I think the attrition rate has gone very well. There's five retirements, so there's still 20 cars running. There's the Lotus going through. Damon Hill is about to lap it. He wants to get through here because they're coming down to these Turpin, which is where Ayrton Senna, Senna could challenge on the inside. Senna was hoping for the hold up from Bernardi's Lotus. But no such luck for him because Zanardi was uh, coming for some criticism this year of his handling of uh, the traffic and his manners in traffic. But uh, seems to have calmed down a bit then, and certainly he was exemplary in the, in the way he let David Hill through. But Senna can now afford to tyre stop. He's got 30 seconds on Berger's Ferrari. And so. If he got a, a good pit stop done, only Schumacher would pass him, and Schumacher would then have to stop. And so if he feels he's giving time away behind Damon Hill, it might be clever of Senna to go sooner rather than later if he's going to stop the tyres. On the other hand, he's, sat, he's never really been closer than a second and a half to Damon Hill, and that's as close as you'd want to get uh, if you were lo really looking after your tyres and not wanting to get into the airstream. I mean, he's closed up a bit when there's been traffic but uh, I'm trying to surmise what Senna's tactics are and Schumacher is closing in at about half a second a lap and the gap is the smallest it's yet been down to four and a half seconds and the problem is that there's nothing Senna can do about it because he can't pass Hill uh, there's not that's not really a practical op option he just hasn't got the power and uh, Schumacher's catching him, and yet he's being held up effectively by Hill, although he's not right on Hill's tail. He's still being dictated to by him. So if he is going to stop for tyres, he's got to go soon, in my opinion, and his right front looks a little bit grainy, but that's not, not the best shot uh, there. But I was looking at that a few laps ago, and it was also like that, about three or four laps ago. So... Uh, Unless he's going to try and go the race on one set of tyres, I would expect Senna to be one of the first stoppers. Both to get in front of Damon Hill by coming by having a few extra laps on fresh rubber over him and staying to get in second place, and then and likewise to secure his lead over the Benetton from behind. It's now 4.8 seconds, so he gained a little bit on that lap, but that's as close as he wants the Benetton to be. Barrichello's car that you saw by the side of the road. Well, Michael Schumacher, more's a pity we haven't seen much of him, but he's closed the gap from over six seconds between himself and number eight Ayrton Senna that you're looking at now to, as James has just said, about four and a half seconds. Uh, and if he can keep keep going at that rate, he's going to be within sight of the McLaren. With, with, with the with, within sight of it, 
in various points of the course now, but he's going to be pretty close to it. And we're on lap 29 out of 69. As you watch Senna go right, left, I thought for a moment he was going to dive into the pit lane there, but uh, he's, he's definitely closer to second place Damon Hill now than he has been for quite a long time. Cross still well out on his own with a lap with a lead of over nine seconds. And we're with Senna now. Now you can see the williams Renault in front. And Damon Hill has got the traffic in front of him and Schumacher has been into the pits. Yes, and Michael Andretti was uh, in front of Damon Hill and I'm sure he would have been ordered to be no help to Damon at best in letting him get past. And I thought I saw a, a new edge of determination in Senna's driving as he's trying to close up because there was another back marker ahead of Hill as well. So the tyre stops have commenced and I think Senna's got to come very, very soon. That is Aguri Suzuki in the footwork Mugen coming in and you're watching now Michael Schumacher who has dropped down to sixth position from fourth place as a result of that tyre stop but now he will really start to fly. He's out on fresh heated new tyres almost up to race temperature. He knows the course and he knows with a clear track in front of him he can get the pedal really hard down and go for it and try and catch Ayrton Senna as you watch Andretti who is still holding up and there was Ayrton Senna behind him and into the pits comes Damon Hill from second position so Ayrton Senna is up into second position in the McLaren let's see how long that pit stop is for Damon Hill it's quite a long one because the right front is still not properly on this is much too long a pit stop. Damon Hill has got some sort of a problem. This is very bad news. 17 seconds for Damon Hill. It should have been about seven seconds. Yes, it was hard to see from where we were up to what went wrong there, but uh, wrong it certainly went. At least 10 seconds awry. And uh, there's been a bit of that this year with uh, the, the very best teams having problems with wheels sticking on and things like that as Berger goes in for his tyre change. Now, does this mean that Senna is going to stay out and try and run the race on one set of tyres? Because it would, it would be most uncharacteristic of him if he's planning to stop tyre, stop the tyres on a scheduled stop. Of course, he's still got a lot of laps to do in which he might, he can change his mind. But if he was planning a definite scheduled stop to let the Schumacher and Hill get the jump on him. His immediately surrounding survival, arri rivals, I would have thought, uh, was out of character. So I now have to think that he's going to try and do the race. But no, getting everything wrong today, Murray. I am. And uh, he's in. It's a good stop. It's an exceptional stop by McLaren. Senna is away, and that should have him in second place. Well, now the question is, is Alain Prost, because Ayrton Senna is still second, is Alain Prost going to make a pit stop? If he is, it'll need to be better than Damon Hill's was, because Damon Hill took 17 seconds, Berger took a whisker over five, Ayrton Senna took five and a half, so that means to say that Damon Hill lost 10 seconds to two of his chief rivals, and that's Martin Brundle into the pits in the Ligier. And Martin Brundle, you will recall, was in eighth position. We're going to have to let the race settle down a bit now because it's always very confusing after tyre stops. Martin Brundle in on lap 32 as race leader Alain Prost. Now, is he going in? No, he is not. He keeps going for another lap. Now, we'll see what the gap is between Alain Prost race leader on lap 33 out of 69, and Ayrton Senna in the McLaren Honda, who is in second position. It was interesting watching Hill's pit stop, and I would suspect there was some sort of breakdown of communication between him and the team then, because the team didn't appear to be ready uh, with the tar all the tyre warmers off. When Hill came in, it seemed that they were still taking the tyre warmer off the right front tyre, or one of the front tyres, and uh, Jordan coming in. Putzen, and uh, it would uh, maybe Hill took him by surprise or they didn't hear him on the radio properly and Senna 
is 29 seconds behind Alan Prost, but uh, he's done one pit stop more than Alan Prost, as it were. Patrese. Yeah, well, let's just watch Patrese. I mean, this should mean that Alan Prost could come in and make a tyre stop and get out again, still in the lead, provided it was a good tyre stop. Ricardo Patrese was at 5.7 seconds, and that was on lap 33 as we watch race leader Alain Prost now nearly 30 seconds ahead of Ayrton Senna and victory here in Canada matters enormously to both these drivers two of the greatest of all time people who live and are watching motor racing at Grand Prix level these days are very lucky because Prost and Senna are undoubtedly two of the greatest that have ever lived and we're able to see them racing against each other time after time as they are doing now and Alain Prost well on his way, but this pit stop could be, will, will be absolutely crucial if he has to make one. He's on his 34th lap now, so Williams Renault leads, Senna is in second position. In third place, it is Michael Schumacher. Fourth is Damon Hill, and that is Christian Fittipaldi, who is in front of and holding up Alain Prost unwittingly. He'll see Prost in his mirrors, and he moves over, and Prost hurtles through, hard on the brakes. Now we'll know fairly soon if Prost is going to come in this lap. Uh, and if he's not, he's leaving it a bit late, because remember, Senna is out on fresh rubber, which is going to give him a speed advantage compared with the Frenchman in the lead. 29 seconds between them. Prost leads, Senna second, Schumacher third, Damon Hill is in fourth position. Up to fifth place comes Carl Wendlinger, and hard on the brakes, into the pits comes Alain Prost. Now, if he takes much over seven seconds, he's going to be in trouble compared with Ayrton Senna, who I remind you took 5.4 seconds. And this time he's managed to catch it. Remember the problems he had in Monaco when he came in for that 10 second penalty and stalled the engine twice and he leaves in the lead as, Mar as Michael Andretti comes in. Yes, and uh, that was a pit stop born of experience. Both Prost and the Williams team, Andretti on his way very quickly. And again, both uh, Prost and the Williams team were clearly doing that one safely and surely. They had plenty of time in hand over Senna and uh, they weren't going to make any risks or do any panics and uh, risk making a delay in the stop. So, when they come round again, we'll get you the gap. Well, there we are, 13.2. Uh, Senna, I don't think, has, no, has any realistic hope of being able to give chase to Cross if he has no problems. Cross the car, advantage is large. However, he will stay hanging in there because he'll want to push Prost, make him keep working to try and force uh, mechanical troubles or even a mistake. Well, now the question on lap 35 is Damon Hill. Alain Prost is leading by over 13 seconds. Senna second, there's the rest of them. Schumacher just behind Senna, and Hill some six seconds behind the German. Karl Wendlinger from Austria in the Sauber in fifth position, ahead of Riccardo Patrese in sixth place. And here is race leader Prost on that new rubber on lap 35. Well, I expect Prost, if all is equal, to be able to dominate the race from that 13-second advantage platform he's got at the moment. But uh, we look set for a real scrap for second place because behind Senna, in quite short order, are Schumacher and Hill, and they are basically in reverse order of who's got the fastest car. And uh, the gap is 2.8 seconds from Senna to Schumacher and five seconds to Hill. But Hill's got the quickest car of the three. Schumacher's car performed well, very well, uh, this weekend, and much better than the McLaren. So we have a possible closing of the concertina here. Indeed. And Alain Prost goes through, holding that commanding lead, praying for reliability. 
but the challenge is for Damon Hill now. He will be expected to finish in second place as he did in Brazil and at Donington and at Monaco to maximize the points in the Constructors' Championship for the Williams team and more importantly, as far as Alain Prost is concerned, to push Senna down and reduce the number of points that the Brazilian can get. He's in second place, is Ayrton Senna, some 10 seconds now behind Alain Prost. There is the McLaren Honda, and you just saw Prost go through in third position. It is still Schumacher, who is five seconds behind Senna. Fourth is Damon Hill, and Senna is the quickest man on the mile. Uh, and not only that, he's, uh, he's catching Prost. He's closed the gap, but bear in mind that Prost has been on a fresh set of tyres, and we know that he plays himself, it always plays himself in gently, just like at the start of a race. But so far, Senna has there as the caption. He's got the gap to just over 10 seconds from over 13. Three seconds since Prost came back onto the circuit after his tyre stop. Uh, has Senna caught and a new fastest lap for Aston Senna. So he is giving it everything at the moment as Damon is starting to close the gap to Michael Schumacher behind. Meanwhile, of course, with his charge, Senna has it's just taken Senna and another second clear of Schumacher. The gap there is 3.7. I'm sorry to feed you all these figures. Uh, please don't get too lost, and we'll keep doing it to you. Watching Michael Schumacher in fourth position, and there are 32 laps to go. So we are well over half distance now with Alain Prost leading Ayrton Senna. This is Schumacher. Now that's an interesting graphic. On the left, you see the RPM of the engine going up and down in the middle. You can see now, watch how quickly the speed changes. From about 30 miles an hour, it'll go up to nearly 190. And on the right, the green bar is the throttle pedal position of Michael Schumacher's right foot. Right off now, straight up and he's doing 150 miles an hour and building. Yes, yeah, so and while that's been going on, Prost has got the message about Senna. He has responded with yet another new fastest lap in the race. And Schumacher. So, up front, fresh rubber, light and fuel loads, and the three, the first three drivers in the last couple of laps have all had a turn at setting a new fastest lap. The current holder of that honour is Michael Schumacher, but uh, we've got a real race on. Carl Wendlinger, after his tyre stop, back onto the circuit, albeit looking a bit late. That looks like a loose seatbelt flapping around, or is it? On his, I just saw something there. Well, one would hope not. There's been no reason to have undone his belts anyway. Out of the pits, he was in fifth position, and Michael Schumacher now with that fastest lap, the quickest man on the circuit, six tenths of a second off the lap record of Gerhard Berger, and Damon Hill struggling to catch the German in the Benetton Ford ahead of him. Damon Hill in fourth place in this Williams Renault. Ahead of him, Michael Schumacher. You saw the McLaren Honda of Michael Andretti well and truly lapped in the background behind Damon Hill, and on lap 38, it is still, of course, Prost leading Senna by 10 seconds. Senna is about five seconds ahead of Schumacher. Dam Damon Hill is in fourth place. Up to fifth position has come Ricardo Patrese. Back into sixth position has come the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger after his tyre stop. Then it is Martin Brundle in seventh place. JJ Leto is in eighth position. And here is Damon Hill. Is he catching Schumacher? Well, the answer is not quite. Schumacher, another new fastest lap. And yet, uh, with all three of the leading three flying, uh, Damon Hill in fourth place trying to keep hold on. And I'm afraid at the moment it is a race by stopwatch because they're, they're just about in sight of each other on the uh, longer straights on the circuit. But that's it. And really, they're getting the gaps. And at the moment, Frost leads Senna by 9.6 seconds. And there is the caption for you so and Senna in turn is well, 8.9 and, and Senna has got closer to Prost 8.9 and Schumacher in turn has got closer to Senna five seconds so the leaders are getting closer 
Uh, look at Martin Brundle in the background behind Gerhard Berger, who is in sixth position. So you're seeing Ricardo Patrese fifth, Gerhard Berger sixth, Martin Brundle seventh, and behind him is Carl Wendlinger, who is in eighth position. And 122.5 is two tenths of a second off the lap record. Michael Schumacher is really flying in his efforts to catch Ayrton Senna in second position. So it's McLaren Ford second, it's Benetton Ford third. Here's the Benetton Ford of Riccardo Patrese, number six in fifth place. And we're with the Italian, with the German Schumacher now. Now, can we look ahead and see Ayrton Senna? There's some five seconds between them. Some parts of the circuit, Schumacher will be able to see the man in front of him, Ayrton Senna, some he won't. It's very twisty, hard on the brakes, up through the gears, down through the gears, very testing on transmissions. Frost, race leader. Lap 41. Race distance, 69 laps. Frost going for the 10 points that would put him ahead of Ayrton Senna in the World Championship if Frost wins this race which would be the fourth victory for the Frenchman this year. Now he's coming up behind the Tyrrell. Now there is Comas, and that is Fittipaldi going through and taking Ukiyo Katayama's Tyrrell, as does Alain Prost that we're riding with now. So, number 23, Fittipaldi, is in 11th place ahead of us, and race leader Alain Prost is bearing down on him to lap the young Brazilian, who is the nephew of Emerson Fittipaldi, who so brilliantly won the Indianapolis 500 race this year. And he's driving a Minardi Ford, same type of engine as Ayrton Senna is using in the McLaren and Schumacher is using in the Benetton. Now let's watch the comparative performance of the Minardi Ford and the Renault powered Williams. Frost uh, effortlessly passes Christian Fittipaldi who politely moves over and lets him through. Yes, and uh, a new lap record for Alan Prost. He's just under 122.2, which will be, and there it is, and that's a new lap record. And that's taken him 10.3 seconds clear of Ayrton Senna, uh, who is losing ground in the middle of the... because he's now under four seconds only ahead of Michael Schumacher, who's in the two been pumping out fastest laps as well. In the meantime, Damon Hill is some seven and a half seconds behind Schumacher and being just a little bit outpaced by this furious battle up front. What a pity they're not all within, covered by a couple of seconds and couldn't have started that way. Certainly, Schumacher has been very impressive since the pit stop, going consistently quickly and really attacking it. Now, if my mental arithmetic is right, and I warn you that it often isn't, and Prost and Senna stay where they are now to the end of the race, Ayrton Senna is still going to be in the lead in the World Championship by one point. So that's something to hang on to and think about as you watch Michael Schumacher really pressing on in third position, catching Okio Katayama's Tyrrell to lap it. The Japanese driver who has yet to score a world championship point this year driving for Tyrrell, last year driving for the LaRousse team, and they're on their way to the East Hairpin, which is the slowest corner on the course, although they approach it at the fastest speed of 180 miles an hour. The blue flag waving there to Katayama to tell him that Schumacher is about to pass him as he's just done. And Michael Schumacher goes past the Tyrrell. The leaders are on lap 43 out of 69, and it is still Prost 10 seconds ahead of Senna.
who is four seconds ahead of Schumacher, who is therefore marginally gaining on the McLaren ahead of him. Damon Hill still in fourth position, ahead of Ricardo Patrese and Gerhard Berger in that sixth position. Martin Brundle is still seventh. Uh, Leto has moved ahead of his teammate, Wendlinger. Leto up to eighth and Wendlinger down to ninth in 10th position and not yet lapped, although I suspect he soon will be, is Eric Comas in the sole remaining uh, LaRousse because you will remember his teammate, Philippe Alio, retired long ago. Yes, and all the talk I gave about uh, the heat here and uh, how hard this circuit is mechanically on cars. This is a very competitive race indeed. We're two thirds of the way through the race now and to have 10 cars still on the same lap by recent modern standards is really, really good news. Yes, and, and don't regard anything as a foregone conclusion. Don't assume that because Prost is that 10 seconds ahead of Senna, he's necessarily going to be able to stay there. The Williams is certainly not invulnerable. It seldom breaks down, but uh, it has been known to in which case it would be yet another victory for Ayrton Senna, further to increase his world championship lead. And there he is. Well, the man in the background, I think, might just try, want to dispute that with you, Murray. Michael Schumacher, who has got Senna very much in his sights. But uh, getting past Ayrton Senna is even more difficult than catching him. Yeah, and Senna's bearing down on Comas and Fittipaldi, who are battling for 10th position, but he's got to lap them, and that, and if they get in his way, because they'll be thinking of their race, not of Ayrton Senna's, and uh, Comas will be trying to keep Fittipaldi back. Fittipaldi will be trying to get past the Frenchman, and neither of them will be worrying too much about number eight, Ayrton Senna, who's bearing down on them, in which case Michael Schumacher could close right up on the McLaren. Now there is the McLaren, and Schumacher, I remind you, is four seconds behind it and gaining. Yes, I think uh, Senna, will, Senna is so aware in the cockpit, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he'd clocked the fact that they're running. His fellow Brazilian, Christian Filipaldi, he's quite capable of calling the McLaren pit on his radio, saying, get down to the Minardi pit and tell him to warn Christian I'm coming. And uh, he really does think of everything. Now, Christian Filipaldi is certainly being very busy in his race. And Senna goes through. And Martin Brundle is up into sixth position because Ricardo Patrese has gone missing. And just to, just to underline what James was saying about Senna, and there is Patrese touring. Look at his left front wing. Somebody's trodden on it. And uh, right front wing, I'm sorry, it's missing. And the left one looks a bit deformed too. So Ricardo Patrese is somewhat short of downforce in the front, to put it mildly. And they'll be putting a new nose on. He will have reported by radio what the problem was, but uh, that's destroyed the Italians' chances of finishing in the first six, I suspect. Meantime, the Benetton pit crew are changing tyres anyway as a precaution. That's a marvellous stop. 15 seconds to fit a new nose assembly with the right and left wings. As the McLaren goes through of Ayrton Senna, he's taken Comas now, he's taken Fittipaldi, now he's got... There was, there was Schumacher in the background, there he is! Now, if Schumacher can get past Fittipaldi and Comas quicker and more cleanly than Ayrton Senna was able to, He'll be right with the McLaren, which is in second place. We're on lap 46 out of 69. Prost leads, Senna second, Schumacher third. Hill is fourth, eight seconds behind Schumacher. And new lap records all the time now. That's two tenths of a second, 122.1 inside the old lap record. And I say again, that is with narrower tyres, smaller wings and different fuel. Great driving. And... Prost is only inching away, but inexorably doing so from Senna. The gap is now up to 11 seconds. Another fast step. You can hear the misfire on the traction control there of Senna's car. It works by uh, 
the sensors tell where the wheels start to spin and it goes into the electrics of the engine and cuts the cylinder. Schumacher is uh, progressing, but he's got traffic to get past. Now, Comas has got a pretty good engine in the LaRousse and will is not an easy man to pass, especially because he's busy racing. Senna powering the McLaren around the hairpin. And he's got past Filipaldi, I saw in the background there, but he's still got Comas, and it took Senna a while to get past Comas. That's Alain Cross, the leader. And Cross having to work very hard. He's uh, having to race a full stretch to maintain his lead, or rather to extend his lead, but even then, a full stretch by very small amounts and traffic ahead of him. Notably, Thierry Bootsen in the Jordan, who is in 15th place, chasing Derek Warwick, who is in uh, 14th position. Prost goes through and takes Thierry Bootsen. I remember that's where that's that very corner where the Belgian retired in a previous Canadian Grand Prix. And Prost is now doing what Senna is so famous for, threading his way through the traffic with great expertise. Senna does it by dominating and frightening the life out of the people who he's about to pass, and, and, and Prost has just gone through there. You were with him. Yes, it is greatly helped when you've got probably 100 horsepower or something like that on the cars that he's actually passing, some of the less well-powered cars in the field. And uh, that makes life very easy. Prost always takes a conservative approach to his lapping, and quite rightly so. But, uh, That's Andrea Di Cesaris, uh, the Tyrrell out again. The Italian in the Tyrrell 019, and that's his sixth retirement of 1993 in seven races as Michael Schumacher. You see the gap he's created now between Comas and Fittipaldi, and that is Damon Hill in fourth position. Now, he's got the Fittipaldi oblique Comas problem, but he's got more power to get past them than Michael Schumacher had. He will be hoping that he gets them on the right part of the circuit. We're on lap 49, and no change at the front. Prost leads, Senna second, Schumacher third, Hill is fourth. Up to fifth place has come Gerhard Berger in the Ferrari. So in the point, still in sixth place, is Martin Brundle. Seventh is JJ Leto, ninth is uh, so, sorry, eight, in eighth position is in Vendlinger, and in ninth position, Comas, followed by Fittipaldi, and that is De Chisaris. Yes, and certainly your reference, Murray, to Prost threading his way well through the traffic is uh, an important one because he doesn't like doing that, but he's having to do it here because the traffic has uh, brought his lead down to under 10 seconds again, although, of course, it's, uh, it's borrowed time for Pereira from Senna, the closing of that gap, because, of course, there's three cars, at least, that he's got a lap that Prost has already lapped, so... Uh, and he will inevitably lose some time. But for the moment, he is closer, and he's holding Schumacher at around four seconds, but... Uh, and it's really now, at the moment, uh, they seem to, there seems to be a lot of cars on this area of the circuit where the leaders are at the moment, and they're getting through all this traffic, so... Then they'll have a clear run. At the moment, the gaps are really down to uh, the driver's skill and luck on the timing of how well they can get through the traffic. Damon Hill up behind 10th placed Christian Fittipaldi and Ayrton Senna is up behind one of the Salbers. Let's see which one it is. It is Carl Wendlinger. Seems to be more like up behind half the field, Murray, than just one Sauber. And uh, that will be a very daunting sight for Senna. But he'll, he'll want to really use his brilliance here to get through it quickly in order, and he got well blocked there, but in order to uh, move through and try... And De Derek Warwick did. In fact, give him a bit of a chop, and again, and Derek Warwick is racing hard, and for a driver of his experience, he really ought to know better. He should have seen him coming, even though he's busy in traffic still. Senna is through, and, uh, and Warwick made error there on the exit of the corner as a result of all that, so he actually 
hurt his own cause as well as Senna's. But Schumacher, you see there in the background, he's arrived in this group already, and they're nicely forewarned by Senna. And Gross clear of the traffic, another fastest lap, but he's really piling it on Gross. He's having to, but Senna's delay has already hurt him badly, and he's now 12 seconds behind Gross, but he's just about clear of this group now. Senna's just taken Bootsen, who is in 14th place. That's of academic interest, because the really interesting thing is, how is Schumacher going to cope with this traffic in front of him? There is Senna, followed by Bootsen, followed by the Sauber, followed very closely indeed, much closer by Michael Schumacher. You can see the gap there. So Schumacher's got two cars between himself and Ayrton Senna as the Brazilian goes into the East Hairpin to come through on his 51st lap out of 69. We're riding with Michael Schumacher now in third place, closing up on the Sauber ahead of him, Ilmore engine. Just, just think of it, these drivers have got some 750 horsepower behind them. They've got traffic in front of them, traffic behind them. They're travelling it up to 180 miles an hour on this comparatively narrow circuit. Prost going quicker and quicker, 121.7. You can see what that means in terms of speed. Over 120 miles an hour average around this 2.75 mile lap. Lap 52, 17 still to go. With Ayrton Senna, when we look on the monitor, and Damon Hill is still in fourth position. But behind there, you can just see Gerhard Berger go through in front of Alain Prost. Now, Martin Brundle has just been lapped, and Brundle, who was gaining slightly on Gerhard Berger. Now, we can see that by the end of the back slowly. He is in sixth position. Well, well, Alain Prost, of course, coming between himself and Gerhard Berger, he will lose a little bit of ground, but Martin Brundle will hope that when Alan then passes or laps for the first time Gerhard Berger, that situation will revert back to how it was. Well, you see the gap at something like three and a half or four seconds between Berger and Martin Brundle in his Ligier. So... Actually, it's funny, John, because right in front of Gerhard Berger is... Ricardo Petresi, Petresi back on the circuit again after having had a new front wing and he's actually running the same sort of speed just a little quicker than uh, Gerhard Berger. Let him through, yes indeed he is and it's terribly important to Alain Prost that this man, Michael Schumacher or Damon Hill who's right behind the German, number two uh, zero, Damon Hill, number two, Alain Prost. It's terribly important to Prost that either Schumacher or Hill, preferably both from Prost's point of view, catch and get past Ayrton Senna because of the World Championship points situation. And uh, Hill has really pulled the bung out now. He's got that Renault V10 engine whirling tremendously fast. And he's catching, he's caught Michael Schumacher, who is in third place. So, we're with Alain Prost now, race leader, and he's coming up to catch Ricardo Patrese, who, of course, has regained the circuit with that uh, new nose cone of his in the Benetton 4. Now, race leader. Straight past. And the flag marshals are doing a very good job here. So, Prost ahead of... Patrese, followed by the Ferrari as they accelerate away with the St. Lawrence Seaway on the left of them. And Alain Prost now is on his 54th lap out of 69. Prost has lapped Gerhard Berger, who is in fifth position. Gerhard Berger, followed by the Benetton Ford of Ricardo Patrese. And Prost is now nearly 14 seconds ahead of Ayrton Senna. So he's pulled away nearly five seconds further from the McLaren, who is four seconds ahead of Michael Schumacher, who has got Damon Hill right with him. As the only Ligier left in the race, that of Martin Brundle goes round. And there's the race lead. So, 
54 laps out of 69 completed. There is race leader Alain Prost in second position. It is still Ayrton Senna with Michael Schumacher about five seconds behind the McLaren. In fourth position, it is Damon Hill. In fifth position, it is Gerhard Berger. And still sixth and scoring a point if he stays there is Martin Brundle in the Ligier. Prost, Senna. Lap 55. And I, for one, will be very pleased indeed if the traction control device is outlawed, because instead of hearing beautiful, crisp, clear sounds from the V12, the V10 and the V8 engines these days, all you hear is a ghastly sort of spluttering, which sounds like a misfire, but isn't. And, of course, it takes away from the skill of the driver, and that is what Grand Prix racing is all about. And there's a uh, big controversy here with the governing body and the stewards of the meeting having said that every team except one, the Lola team, is breaking the rules with having active suspension and traction control, and that something is going to be done about it by the French Grand Prix, which is in three weeks' time. Well, there's millions and millions of pounds being spent on developing those devices. The teams don't like it. The teams will object. And sadly, it looks as though Formula One is going to be in a state of political disarray if that situation continues. But, meantime, the fully everything Benetton has got active suspension, has got tra traction control, and Ricardo Patrese coming into the pit lane again very slowly with no sign of driving urgency and it looks as though he may well be out of the race Ricardo Patrese to join the others that's Luca Badur and Barry Kello, Alio, Mark Blundell, Sean Lacey, Andrea De Cesaris now Ricardo Patrese but up front on lap 56 out of 69 the same story Alain Prost has led all the way except those few opening laps at the start when Damon Hill was in control and now we're with Schumacher. Yes, that's a readout of all his performance but in the meantime he's closer to Senna. He was 4.3 seconds behind him when they last uh, last time we had a gap on it. That looks like rather less than 4.3 seconds to me. And Schumacher, there's clear traffic ahead. This is at the moment an out and out race between the two without traffic. about 13,000 revs in the gears. And yes, the gap is under 4.3 seconds. It's down to three seconds and a new fastest lap in the race for Michael Schumacher. And he really has driven a tremendous race since the tyre stops seem to inject a whole load of life into this race. And there we see it, 121.682. Schumacher, well under the old lap record. And at last, we've got a really competitive motor race on our hands. Seven-tenths of a second under the old lap record, notwithstanding the lower, lower downforce, narrower tyres and uh, not-so-strong fuel. And Michael Schumacher, the man that could do it. What an incredible young man he is. After all, he's only 24, and this is only his second full season of Grand Prix racing. And uh, in that short time, he's already had four second places. A, a potential world champion, if ever I saw one. And he's really flying now. What he wants to do is not just to get that second place, but to get the second place from Ayrton Senna to prove in the view of the Benetton team the superiority of their car with allegedly a rather more powerful version of the Ford V8 engine which the McLaren rather grumpily uses because they feel that they are entitled to the same engine that Benetton have got. And that's Ayrton Senna in second place on lap 58, so there's only 11 laps to go. 
being held up by Andre de Cesaris. The blue flags are waved furiously. Now there is Schumacher. Now that's given Schumacher the opportunity to close up on the Tyrrell and then to get past it. It's not uh, de Cesaris, of course. Well, it is a somewhat ironical situation that the man leading the world championship uh, gets the uh, grade two engine and can't get the proper engine. And uh, uh, that, of course, is to do with uh, politics and contracts and things like that. But uh, on the face of it, uh, I think it's only right and proper that Ayrton Senna should have that engine and that Ford should be able to make it available to uh, whoever they want. Because after all, uh, they develop the engine and they need to win as Schumacher gets closer and closer. And uh, we don't need to bother with the stopwatch now to time the gap. We can see it. And this, of course, is what Alain Prost up front would be hoping for, with the sight of Michael Schumacher catching and potentially getting past Ayrton Senna. I say potentially because all of a sudden that McLaren Ford will become the widest car on the circuit if Schumacher can get under the rear wing of it because the driver's only got to marginally adjust his position on the track, left or right, to make it very difficult indeed anywhere, let, let alone this uh, Gilles Villeneuve circuit at Montreal for the driver behind him to get past. But if anybody can, Michael Schumacher will. Senna second, Schumacher third. Yes, and this is a very interesting race now between two truly great drivers. Here we have Ayrton Senna, possibly, probably, the greatest racing driver of all time, being pursued by the young man who aspires to everything that Senna has achieved and who is just as exciting as Senna was at this stage of his career. A truly great talent Schumacher is too, and they're in pretty evenly matched machinery. Schumacher definitely has a power advantage. The Benetton's running well, but uh, Senna has an enormous experience advantage and he's certainly still the quickest man in the business so Schumacher battle is now about to be joined well this is Senna's 149th Grand Prix it is Senna's 29th Grand Prix and uh, it's a battle of the Titans McLaren did an absolutely fantastic job to develop this car in a very short time after they had lost the Honda V12 engine at the end of 1992 when the Japanese concern decided they were going to race in Formula One no more. Ten laps to go, as you can see. In front of these two, some 15 seconds ahead, is Alain Prost. And now the battle is on because... Schumacher is in the slipstream of Ayrton Senna's McLaren Ford. Now, it's up to turn two. One of the slower corners on the course. Turn one, sorry, 40 miles an hour. When they break hard for that. Uh, and they'll do that after they've gone through the right left at the end of the lap and this is the end of the 60th lap for these two drivers Alain Prost of course well on his way potentially to win for the 48th time in his supreme career now watch the way Schumacher handles his car watch the angle of the front wheels watch the twisting and turning of the steering wheel. He's got a semi-automatic transmission, of course, so he never has to take his hands off the wheel. They're both on comparatively fresh tyres. They stopped some laps ago, but there's plenty of life left in their tyres. They've both got the same type of engine. They've both got active suspension. They've both got traction control, so it's down to the drivers. And Senna knows what the score is. He can see Schumacher in his rear mirrors. And there it is, 180 miles an hour. And backs off. What's the revs rising? 13,000, over 13,000 from the V8 engine behind him. Senna's got two problems. One, I think I have one problem, basically. I, I'm sure 
but Ayrton Senna, being the realist that he is, is just going as quick as he can to maintain such pressure as he can on Alain Prost, but without any hope of catching him. But the major problem, of course, is the one that we're travelling with now. Michael Schumacher, and he is edging up on the McLaren or braking there. This is lap 62. Yes, the problem for Schumacher is he's entered into that dirty air zone uh, where you can go so near, but to some extent yet so far, except when there's traffic. And uh, this is important moment for Senna. This is when he's vulnerable, when he's got a slow car ahead of him. Uh, what we can't see is where Schumacher is, but right there. Yes, and that was Suzuki, Derek Warwick's teammate. And they're both through, and that's a better view. Now we can see both cars, because we're looking from Schumacher's cockpit. And you see, he gets into... Schumacher was very close, courtesy of the back marker, but once they get going, the hole in the air that Senna's car is making affects his grip in the corners badly because he's not getting clean air over his wing surfaces, which reduce the amount of downforce of the car. So, uh, we saw that earlier with uh, Senna sitting comfortably behind Damon Hill without wanting to get into the dirty air. Schumacher now certainly does want to get into it to get a shot at a pass, but he just can't get right onto his tail. And in fact, the designers of modern racing cars spend quite a lot of time and trouble when uh, doing the airflow of the car of making sure that uh, when the, pu the cars pass through the air, it leaves a real mess. Oh, dear goodness me. Schumacher goes through and it looks as though he's crippled Senna's car in the process. Yes, Senna's going in, and Schumacher was making a desperate lunge for second place, and he got it, and Ayrton Senna is out of the race, and that means there's no points. That will be ten points for Alain Prost, and that will do his world championship chances a power of good. But meantime, is there going to be a protest? Let's have a look at this replay. Now, there is Senna on the right. Schumacher gets right up alongside him, and it looked to me as though Senna's left rear wheel just touched Ayrton Senna's right rear as they went through but whatever it now here's a replay from Schumacher's point of view he, he turns in for the left hander there across Ayrton Senna and just clips the McLaren in the process but he's second I had the feeling that Senna may have been in a bit of trouble already before uh, that happened and had slowed and Schumacher uh, but wasn't being helpful but I think Senna I've got that impression anyway, that he had a problem already. Well, it looks now, as a result of that, as though for the second time this year, the incredible Michael Schumacher that we're looking at in a car which looks absolutely unharmed by that incident is going to finish in second place. He was second in San Marino, and he's also had two third places this year. Uh, he's going to get, if he finishes where he is, as he passes Senna's car again, he will get six points for his second place, which added to the 14 he already has. Well, I don't think it will change the position between him and Damon Hill. Damon Hill is now up into third position. So, Frost leads, we're on lap 64 now. Just 65, 66, 67, 68, and lap 69 to go. Replay again. You have a look. Well... Senna really did seem to have slowed right up, as James said, in which case it would have unsighted uh, Schumacher, who wouldn't have been expecting that, and could explain the coming together of the two cars, the light coming together of the two cars. Five laps to go, Alain Prost leads, potentially on ten points, to give him 47 and lift him five points ahead of Ayrton Senna in the World Championship after seven of the 16 races in the series. Well, Ayrton Senna has already worked miracles this year with three victories in Brazil, in, at Donington and at Monaco in comparison with the Williams Renault driven by this man, Alain Prost, that we expected to drive everything into the ground in 1993.
but whatever Senna's problem was, it was bitter luck for the Brazilian. He's having to do something in 1993 that he's not at all used to doing, and that's uh, driving with less power than the cars in front of him. And you will recall that there was a bitter battle between Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost about whether Senna would get a drive in the Williams team this year, having offered to do it for nothing if they'd give him a seat. And he's on, or was on, about uh, $23 million a year. He wouldn't have driven for nothing, of course. He would have got a lot of money. But that's an indication of how much the Brazilian wanted to drive a Williams Renault. And you can see the reason now. That's it. Alain Prost. Just four laps to go. He's on lap 66 now. He has a comfortable lead of 15 seconds over Michael Schumacher. And I suspect that the German, knowing the situation, will have backed right off and will be taking things easy, knowing that in the time that's left, no matter how hard he charges, he cannot catch, let alone pass Alain Prost. He'll settle very thankfully for six World Championship points from another second position with Damon Hill, a very well-deserved third. There he is, coming up to pass Carl Wendlinger's Sauber, which is in sixth position. Sorry, in... Yes, in sixth position now. So the Sauber is in the points again. There's Derek Warwick. And the race order on lap 64, and they're now on lap 66. Alain Prost leading with... Schumacher in second place, Hill in third, Berger lapped in fourth position, up to fifth has come Martin Brundle, sixth is Wendlinger, seventh is JJ Leto, eighth is Eric Comas, ninth is Fittipaldi, and in tenth position is Johnny Herbert. As you look at the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger going through and taking Derek Warwick in the footwork Mugen, and the Englishman is very well down the field. He's in about 15th place. For a team that uh, has spent a lot of money this year and are continuing to spend a lot of money, footwork, because amongst other things, they're about to use on a purchased basis the McLaren active suspension, just as it's been banned. And that will have cost them a lot of money and they have had very little to show for it this season because the highest place that they've had was Derek Warwick's seventh position in South Africa. However, Alain Prost now, between him and another 10 points to lift him to an incredible almost 750 World Championship points in his career, which started in Formula One in 1980 when he drove for McLaren before going on to drive for Renault, for Ferrari, for McLaren from 1984 to 89, when we had so many memorable races between him and Ayrton Senna, who the two, two of them fell out so thoroughly. And now for the Williams Renault team, Alain Prost out of racing in 1992, having been fired by Ferrari in 1991, spent the whole of 1992 using all his political skill to make sure that he got a drive in the best possible car and my goodness he's done it victory in south africa victory at san marino victory in spain and not very far off victory in canada if he just keeps going he's on his 68th lap now he's about to start his 69th and last lap out of the east hairpin 15 seconds ahead of michael schumacher soon when you see him go across the grid he will be on his last lap yes so this has been a very good race by pross he's done everything right well he made a, a relatively poor start but i think it's fair to say david hill made an excellent one and once he had established himself in the lead he'll let him go really and he paid himself in usually and then he drove with tremendously consistent speed, which is Pross's real hallmark of uh, uh, his quality driving, the fact that he can 
be flat out and lap time and again within a tenth and he was just chipping away at Barca's lap all the way as his fuel load came down and it's been an untroubled race and uh, none of the tactical stuff that so tripped him up earlier this year has come into play and he's really driven very well indeed today. Tremendous challenge by Senna to go from eighth on the grid to fourth after a couple of laps the way he just bullied his way past the two Ferraris was sensational Donington style stuff and he got himself fo forced his way into second place and then he will feel that, that was really cruel luck it looked to me like a mechanical problem had already occurred on his car and that he had slowed when Schumacher uh, inadvertently clipped him I don't think that was the reason for his retirement and that's twice this season that Senna has been robbed by mechanicals when in a pretty safe second place before a race and he will rue that very much it happened in Imola as well as so Prost comes in to take an excellent victory for the first time in his 190 race career Alain Prost wins in Canada it's his fourth win of the year and it puts him back into the lead of the world championship of 1993 after an absolutely immaculate drive Michael Schumacher finishing in second place, coming across the line, out of the left-hander. Now we wait for Damon Hill to make it 14 points for the Williams team in the Constructors' Championship, further to increase their lead over McLaren. But it's been Alain Prost race, and here is Damon Hill in the second Williams Renault. Cross the winner, Schumacher in second place, Williams wins, Benetton second, Renault engine wins, Ford engine second, Williams third, Renault engine third, that's Damon Hill, and behind Damon Hill, those are the only three men to go the full distance in Canada, 69 laps. Gerhard Berger is already home in fourth position, in fifth position to get two more points for Ligier, Martin Brundle, which will have done his morale a power of good, a point for the Sauber team from Carl Wendlinger for finishing in seventh place, in, in sixth place, I'm sorry, in seventh position, it's JJ Leto, in eighth position, it is Eric Comas, and in ninth position, it's Christian Fittipaldi, the young Brazilian in the Minardi, and Alain Prost, the man of the day. Very much the favourite. Alain Prost, winning time is 1 hour 36 minutes and 41 seconds, and that is half a minute faster than Gerhard Berger's winning time of last year. And of course, Michael Schumacher's fastest lap of 1 minute 21.500 set on lap uh, 57. That is a new lap record. Schumacher second, Hill third, Gerhard Berger in fourth. Fifth, Martin Brundle and sixth, Carl Wendlinger. There we see the top six on our screen. Martin Brundle points, Carl Wendlinger points. I think, John, a top six we could have expected, apart from the fact that Tenna is there. Well, I think that's going to be very disappointing, certainly from the championship standpoint. But looking at Martin Brundle, now the next Grand Prix, French Grand Prix at Manicure, that, of course, is the headquarters, the base for the Ligier Renault team. And what better way for that team to approach their home, literally, their home Grand Prix with a points finish here in Canada. And, uh, well, who's going to bet against one of the two Ligiers, Mark Blundell or Martin Brundle, possibly having a podium finish. It'd be a great result for the Ligier team to have at their Manicour base. There we see the cars going into the Parc Ferme. These are the championship standings when we get back to Europe. Alain Prost, 47 points. Ayrton Senna, 42. Damon Hill, 22. Michael Schumacher is in fourth place. And there we see the rest of the drivers. And on the next page, we should see Carl Wendlinger on his first points of the 1993 season. There we are. And Martin Brundle has made a jump up to fourth place in the championship jump because he has overtaken both Mark Blundle and Johnny Herbert. Well, there are the crowds, the thousands of Canadian Formula One Grand Prix enthusiasts all making their way, of course, 
Montreal is in the heart of the, the French-speaking part of Canada. And Alan Prost sitting in his Williams just waiting to get out. 25 points, the difference between Williams and McLaren. So that is a very big gap indeed. And there we see the rest of the Constructors' Championship. We're going to take a short break here in Eurosport. Please join us after that for the rostrum of this Canadian Grand Prix. Als we nu richting deze toren hebben gegeven, al daar waar het podium is, dan kijk die mensen zwollen zich. Ik klim allemaal hier door een gat in het hek, wat speciaal gemaakt is overigens, om uh, ervoor te zorgen dat de televisiecommentatoren niet 4,5 kilometer moeten omlopen voordat ze bij hun commentaarpositie zijn, want dat is een van de dingen die hier nogal moeilijk geregeld is. Een drukte van je welste, dat is duidelijk. Daar ziet u ook Thierry Bouten, die het dan weer tot de finish gehaald heeft. Rubens Barrichello voor hem mocht het weer niet zo zijn. Dat is jammer voor deze jonge man die daardoor misschien toch volgend jaar wel naar een ander team zal gaan. Daar aan Dretti heeft hem dan toch uitgereden. Ze is uiteindelijk terechtgekomen op de 14e plaats. Maar ook god, wat zal die ontevreden zijn. Op de start liet zijn motor hem even in de steek. Ze kon hem niet aan de gang krijgen. De wagen stond ook nog vast in een van de versnellingen. En dan is het toch moeilijk om dat hele boeltje zo met die stress die je dan toch hebt weer aan de praat te krijgen. Een lachende aal en prost, tevreden als hij is, en dat mag hij natuurlijk ook zijn. Hij gaat naar Frankrijk in de wetenschap dat hij aankomt staat van het wereldkampioenschap. En in Frankrijk, wat je kan zien als een soort tijdstukje van hem, moet hij het natuurlijk ook daar weer kunnen gaan maken. Zij daar kunnen rustig op dit podium hier in Canada. Damon Hilder achteraan. Wordt er nog even wat water bijgetankt. Ik denk dat de heren zo'n 3,5 à 4 liter vocht verloren hebben tijdens deze wedstrijd. De temperatuur buiten, als we nog even terugkijken, is nog steeds. De wiet opgelopen zelf, 30,5 graad. Kwart voor vier smiddags en een lachende Fransman aan Alain Prost. Welcome back here in Canada. That's Alain Prost, the winner of the Canadian Grand Prix 1993. We just had the uh, French national anthem and now for the winning constructor, the British. We're going to have the champagne shower. Ian Harrison there coming on to the rostrum to pick up the trophy for the winning constructor. And it gives us a little time to announce, of course, don't forget to watch Eurosport Wednesday magazine for a look behind the scenes of this Canadian Grand Prix. Well, Alan Prost, jubilant. And uh, now it's a little bit relieved because after the frustrations and the disappointments of Monte Carlo three weeks ago when he was penalized for that marginal jump start and of course all the other problems that had then occurred after that, uh, he will go now to his home Grand Prix at Manicourt. Looking forward indeed to returning to that number one spot on the podium. Michael Schumacher yet again displaying this with this man. He's incorrigible, he's absolutely delighted any time he gets onto a podium. And uh, you can see everybody there, they have worked very, very hard. Hair, well matted, and even Alan Prost, when he took his Goodyear hat off a little earlier, we could see that his curly black hair was very, very wet indeed. Marco Schumacher will finish. 12 seconds behind Gerhard Berger last year and this year finishes 14 seconds behind race winner Alain Prost. This is what a lot of people have been waiting for. They're going to get wet. The drivers are going to get wet. Well, it's tradition, I suppose. Well, there are three very, very happy men indeed and uh, Alain really getting a, a champagne shower from Michael Schumacher. You'd think Michael had won the race, but you know, 
that's what the public want to see. They want to see a driver up there showing that kind of joy and pleasure after a hard day's work in the sun. And this, believe me, was one of the hardest Grand Prix of the 1993 season so far. It was hot all day out there. And all three men will have suffered a fair degree of dehydration. They'll be pounds lighter after this Grand Prix. And now it's into the press room to give us the definitive version of what happened out there. Well, this was the Canadian Grand Prix here on Eurosport. Alain Prost winning his 48th Grand Prix of his Grand Prix career. In three weeks' time, we're going to go to Magnicourt in France. And, of course, on the Friday, we're going to have qualifying live. On the Saturday, we're going to have qualifying live. And, of course, on race day, half an hour before the start, we'll be on the grid to get to you the latest information, the drivers. The car was working very well, but I must say that it was more difficult than I thought uh, during the last two days. Uh, in fact, today, I don't know why exactly, but uh, the Benetton and, uh, and also the McLaren were, were much closer than I thought. So uh, it was good because the car was working perfectly, but I had to push very hard during the whole race because uh, uh, Michael was pushing uh, Ayrton very hard at the end, so I had to, I had to keep the, the gap. Uh, it was not so easy. Also, it's a very difficult track. I mean, physically, because you have to brake very hard, very often, and uh, uh, after a few laps, you don't feel your right foot very well, you know, so it's, it's very difficult. Also, I had to overtake a lot of cars. I mean, normal circumstances, you know, but I'm um, quite happy, and the team has done a very good job. It's the first time we race with the um, power throttle, and uh, we won the race. It's, I'm quite pleased. Before the race, Alan, you told me this was your second French Grand Prix. The next one, of course, in three weeks is the real French Grand Prix. You must be looking forward to that. Yeah, it was all French, this one. But, uh, yeah, the next one, uh, for sure, is going to be very important. I would like to win it because uh, I always find extra motivation in France. And uh, it would be good also if I win for the championship. Before the start, I really was thinking to be on the podium. Maybe I was thinking as well uh, a bit further than I was about second place because the car worked fairly well in the warm-up. And then you, we uh, have made the possibility to overtake one of the Williams, especially at the start. But as you saw in the start, uh, it didn't work very well. I had a problem with my traction control. I nearly stalled the engine. Uh, I did it twice. And I was lucky to start the race. After I started then, I think I was in 11th or 12th position, something like this and I came back to second position. And to come back to second position from this position is something like uh, a victory. And I have to say the team has done a good performance, has done a good job, like in Monaco. In Monaco we were a bit unhappy, unlucky. Uh, but here we finished the race in a good position. That's fantastic. You were having a tremendous battle with Senna and you also looked as if you were enjoying it. Yes, I did enjoy. I always enjoyed fighting, uh, <laughs> especially with Senna. He's a good driver and a hard driver. And he if you can fight with somebody like him, it's a good, uh, good sign. Did the cars touch? I mean, you seem to be terribly close in the overtaking manoeuvre. It was more than close. Uh, we nearly touched, and I was uh, quite afraid uh, going off in this situation. I didn't know where he moved, and uh, probably haven't, he hasn't seen me. He was struggling with his car, and I really was lucky because there was not many space left, but I got through. Well, I'm, I made a good start, as uh, I tend to. Uh, feel quite comfortable at starts and uh, I was uh, concerned for, for Michael despite what I might have said uh, before the race I was it was obvious that the Benettons were going to be a factor here and I was concerned to make a good start and uh, once I got ahead in the lead it was important to keep pushing because I could see that uh, Ayrton was behind us and uh, it was important to try and pull away and, and the first few laps of the race seemed to be going to plan but uh, after I dropped uh, back to second place, it was more difficult to... I was pushing quite hard to stay ahead of Ayrton. You had a fairly difficult pit stop, didn't you? They didn't seem to be ready for you. Is that fair? Uh, I think that's fair. <laughs> yes, I was uh, expecting everything to be going to plan, and uh, the pit stop itself wasn't bad, but I could see them running around looking for tyres, which is uh, something I haven't had a chance to talk to them about yet. But uh, the car ran reliably, reliably through the race, and that's... Uh, that is credit to the Williams team. And this is a very hard race on machinery. And both our cars finished. 
and uh, I'm very pleased to have come third and get, a, get another podium finish. It was a hard race? Yeah, it was very hard because I had a fantastic start and then I was third, but I, I pushed a bit away and uh, I get a big brake problem, I get a long battle, so I had to slow down after five laps already and that was my biggest problem. So I let pass some people, Sean, and uh, I had to slow down just even more to, to, to take care about the brakes. But everything was fine. I mean, and I did a bit stop, then I could push Patrese until he did a mistake. And uh, then I was very, very tight on fuel consumption, so uh, uh, it was difficult with Brandl not to show him that I had a problem. But I could push a lap, and then I slowed down two laps to, to take back fuel again, and I pushed the lap. So it worked out well. I'm very happy with the result. Everything worked well. Now we have to test and to, to work forward again. Yes, very happy again for the team. More, more points. Very competitive race. Uh, big, uh, we had a big fight with Gerhard Berger, Ricardo Patrese for more or less the whole race. It was very exciting for me. Uh, it's uh, good things to be, for you to, to have a fight with the Ferrari and the Benetton. That's, uh, that's where Ligier should be, maybe ahead. What uh, can be uh, the next race? Well, Magnico, the, the home race for the team, so we, we hope to put on a good show. Benetton Sanders 42. Was it a great race for you? It was not great, but I think it was good. In the beginning, I was behind Brandl. Just uh, same as Quick, or maybe a little bit slower. I had to fight to, to, to stay in touch with him. And then I actually wanted to go through without a stop, but it didn't work. I had to stop a bit too late, lost some time there. And then I was seventh and uh, Senna stopped for me, fortunately, and I was in the points. At the end I had a gearbox problem, so I slowed down very much, but uh, it was still, was still no problem. And it's the first time I've managed to finish a race without any problems. And I'm racing in a car that I'm learning about all the time. Things are fine now. It's true, I've had a lot of problems up till now, except maybe in the race. This is the first time we've been able to collect a lot of valuable information for the future. What kind of information, we ask? Well, he says, regarding the handling of the car on the track, regarding changes that have been made to the car between today and yesterday, because yesterday the car wasn't working well, and it's much better. It's much better now in the race. It's not been done to the suspension, the sitting of the car. I'm trying to improve it and improve myself, and this has been difficult up until now. So there's our podium. Alain Prost, Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill, the three of them together. It's been much of the year, Prost telling us that we had a fantastic weekend because it was the first time this season, maybe the first race where we really didn't have any serious problems. I made the best timing of all the practice sessions, I won the race, Senna didn't finish and this enabled me to get back to the top of the championship. That is Philippe Alliot in the Lamborghini LaRousse, the team run by Britain's Robin Hurd. Also one of Eurosport IndyCar commentators. We asked Philippe what happened. He said, well, it's my 100th Grand Prix. I'd rather forget this one quickly because I started to have problems on Friday in the practice sessions. And then at the start of the race, I had to take the T car. I had problems with my own car. And then during the race, I broke my gear lever. So all in all, it was a bad weekend for me. He said, well, I hope Eric can get some points. He's had a fantastic race, so he must try and get to the finish to get points. I'll be happy then, and I wouldn't feel too miserable about my own problems. And that is Mark Blundell. He's gone backwards into the wall. What a disappointment for Mark. Uh, lost it under braking at the first chicane. Coming into the first chicane, went on the brakes, and the car started to go up and bump around. And I just... Uh, And Senna's race is over. For sure, it looks like a, a battery problem or an alternator. It was, I think, a low voltage that developed uh, on the, the lab before I stopped. And at the place that uh, the engine, the engine just died. It was, it was just a sudden, a sudden problem. Just died and uh, had no warning. Um, I was lucky, so was Michael, because he was very close to me at that point, and, uh, and I think uh, we nearly had a, an accident in that moment, so I, I'm just happy that we didn't get involved and he didn't have an accident uh, at that point.
with seven races completed in the World Championship this year, Alain Prost moves back into the lead of the World Championship, five points ahead of Ayrton Senna, down to second. Damon Hill still in third position with 22 points, two ahead of Michael Schumacher in the Benetton. And in fifth position now, it's Martin Brundle in the Ligier. Williams were well ahead in the Constructors' Championship before Canada. Now they're 25 points ahead of McLaren. And McLaren, in their turn, are 19 points ahead of Benetton, who are 12 points ahead of Ligier in fourth place. In three weeks' time, it's the French Grand Prix at Magny Cour. That is Alain Prost's home circuit. Is he going to make it five wins of the year there? Watch the whole race live on BBC One.